What is an Identity Access Management or IEM Administrator? In this video, you're going to learn about the IEM Administrator role in the cybersecurity world. So we'll talk about an overview of the job, different job titles you might see out there, job responsibilities, the salary you can expect for the US, India, and the UK, as well as some general tools that you might be using. And then do you need a college degree? Do you need certs? Do you need all that stuff? Or is this the type of role that you can just get some skills and go out and actually get? So let's dive into an overview of this role. Essentially what you're gonna be doing, very similar to the previous video we did on IAM and engineer, um, really it's just a, a little bit of a difference in some of the responsibilities and the job title. But essentially you're you're over that user or system access management. So any any users, and by users, we're just gonna define that as it might be people, might be systems, might be applications, anything that needs access you're the individual that will be managing that access. And through automation, you're typically not gonna be manually doing uh, very much stuff at all. And essentially, the reason why we need IAM, our identity access management, is because we're trying to protect critical data as an organization. And based on the organization you're at, that might be a different definition or different types of data might be deemed critical over others. For example, if you work for a healthcare organization, then patient data, especially around their healthcare records or social security, date of birth, all these things, that would be deemed critical data, whereas maybe information about the schedule of people cleaning the office, so the janitors cleaning the office, that would not be critical data usually in a healthcare setting. So what about different job titles? Well, identity, um, identity management specialist, um, access management engineer, secure identity manager, identity management architect, uh, IAM operations analyst, um, identity governance specialist. I mean, there's just a ton of different job titles out there for this. I've posted them all below in the description of this video. So you can check those out and go searching online for this particular role. Now, before we dive into job responsibilities, I do want to stress this is a hands-on technical role. This is not something, if you're not strong technically or if you don't want to do the, the hands-on hacking type of stuff with the keyboard and, and all that stuff, if you, don't, if you don't want to do that, this is not a role for you. Um, check out GRC or something like that where you don't need strong technical skills. This one is hands-on technical. So that being said, what are some of those job responsibilities? Well, that user account management or the access management, as I mentioned, um, security controls and essentially just making sure that you're managing the things like security groups and roles and others and that any controls or policies put in place are actually working right they're properly enforced that there's some kind of audit trail and essentially all that means is we're monitoring the activity so logins or failed login attempts um, logins or, or attempted access to information that maybe somebody shouldn't have access to. So all these things are what we call an audit trail in the cybersecurity world. And that's all that, that's all we're talking about with security controls. We want to also monitor those controls and make sure they're actually working properly. Compliance. So making sure that whatever policies and procedures that we have in place are actually compliant with regulations, uh, you know, industry standards, um, any legal requirements, any contractual requirements or SLAs or service level agreements. We want to ensure that whatever we're doing is matching up to that stuff because we can get a lot of tr trouble and also financial trouble in that situation. You will be troubleshooting because even though we want the world to be perfect, we all know it's not. So things will break, things will go crazy. Um, sometimes people will bypass security controls, especially threat actors, because they love to do that stuff. So you'll be troubleshooting to figure out what went wrong, how can we fix that, what's going on. Maybe, uh, for example, you're using like Okta or something like that, and all of a sudden Okta goes down or they're having an issue with a third-party vendor, and so now you're having issues on your company. So you got to troubleshoot and figure out what the actual issue is. And then documentation. If it's not documented, it wasn't done. And that's a rule from back when I was a nurse. So you're going to be involved in, in essentially creating and maintaining documentation related to the user accounts and the access and access management and the policies and procedures and security controls and all that good stuff. And the good news is a lot of that's automated. So as the data is coming in, it spits out in, in a lot of these tools, it spits out a report for you so you don't have to sit there and manually type all this stuff because we would probably all lose our minds if we had to do that, especially if we look at public cloud environments where we're talking about security there. So it sounds like you're going to be doing a lot of work. So what are you going to be making? Well, here in the U.S., typically for this role, you're looking at around 72000 for kind of the more entry level. And by entry level, I mean you've got like a, maybe a year or two in IT or some other cyber role and now you're coming into this particular role. This is not usually an, a totally entry level role, um, but there are a few people I know of that were able to get it, this as their first job. But that being said, and we'll talk about 
degrees inserts and all that stuff in a minute. That being said, you'll you'll need to be showing like you can actually do some things to get this as an entry level world. But anyways, seventy two thousand kind of starting out all the way up into the six figures here in the U.S. In the U.K. around twenty six thousand all the way up to like sixty thousand British pounds, and then in India. Uh, averaging around 340,000 all the way up to just under 2 million Indian rupees. So again, all that stuff depends on where you work for, who you work for, what location, your skill set already, how you interview, all these different factors in, in place there. So what about tools? Well, I mentioned Okta earlier. So there's different identity access management tools you'd be working with. So things like Okta or SailPoint. SailPoint's a very popular one out there. So if you're looking at like getting certs, um, which we'll talk about in a little bit, um, you may explore looking at some things like SailPoint or even just going through some of the free training because that will help you quite a bit on your resume when you're applying for jobs to have those keywords on there. Uh, you'll be working with multi-factor authentication. So some of the ones like RSA, Secure ID. Uh, you may may be working with password managers. LastPass is a very popular one out there. Uh, Privileged Access Management Solutions or PAM Solutions. CyberArk is, is one that offers that, one of many. Uh, in the cloud environment, you might be working with some of the na native solutions in the different environments like AWS or Azure or Google. For example, Google Cloud Identity is a native solution they have built in there. And then anything around Active Directory management. Uh, so it might be around Active Directory on-prem or Active Directory up in the cloud. So Azure Active Directory essentially. So um, a lot of different tools you might be working with. All of these are all around essentially managing that access to different things. Now, what about college degrees and all that good stuff? Well, you don't need one. Um, that's the good news. You don't You don't usually even need one in a job description. I, I rarely see it as a required. It's usually a nice to have, you know, a preferred. Um, as far as certs, uh, I mean, they're not required. It's it's good to get some if you, if you got in your budget. So like Security Plus is kind of a de facto one for cybersecurity jobs in general. There's also a Certified Identity Access Manager cert or SIAM. Um, as I mentioned already, like places like SailPoint and other vendors usually have like entry level certs or trainings for free. So definitely check those out. And so I would start by looking at job descriptions and then see what they're asking for and then go look at the, the provider's website. And from there, see what kind of free trainings they have just so you can get some stuff on your resume. And then as you grow your career, if you want to get more into the managerial level, that's where I would recommend looking at the CISSP just to check that one out um, as well. It just helps your career long-term, but it's not one for entry level whatsoever. So if you like these videos, if you have questions around cybersecurity careers, let us know in the comments. But if you like these videos, uh, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell for this channel because we are pushing out a lot of content for free and that's the only way you're gonna get notified about it. We look forward to seeing you in the next video.